Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing. Today we're going to take a look at a company that needs absolutely no introduction. We are taking a look at Facebook. I'm excited to review this one because their products, namely Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, are so popular and widely used. I'm also curious to learn more about the power of their digital advertising platform. And last but not least, uh, there's been so much news around the company recently that I think it should make for interesting discussion. So again, Facebook doesn't really need an introduction. The company generates advertising revenue largely through its social media platforms, both Facebook and Instagram. It has approximately two and a half billion users across, uh, across its properties. So if you think about it, approximately a third of the world is using their products in some way. They also own WhatsApp and are investing in new business lines such as virtual reality. So if we move now to the trading chart, uh, this is the last five year trading chart for Facebook. Uh, first thing that I'll point out is that it does not pay a dividend. Valuation is interesting here. It trades about approximately 10 times EV to revenue, uh, which is rich by most standards. But when you look at it on an earnings basis, it trades at 27 times historical 2017 earnings per share and approximately 20 times 2018 earnings per share. So 20 times forward PE for a business that's been growing approximately 40% a year um, seems interesting. High, margin, high margins and earnings conversion of advertising revenue is one of the reasons why you can see the, the difference in the multiples between EV to revenue and price to earnings. The stock price has come off recently after, after guidance on the Q2 call. You can see that roughly here just in the summer. Um, there are some interesting comments made there that we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, and of course, recently, there's just been a lot of volatility in the markets overall. Uh, so Facebook did peak at a little over $200 a share earlier in the summer, and it's currently trading at $145. So this video is going to take a look at the financial overview for Facebook, uh, look at recent news and results, discussion on the valuation, and then, of course, we'll conclude with key considerations for the stock. So let's jump into it. For the financial overview, we will start with the annual report. We'll just jump over here on page, I believe, 34. Gives you a good overview of the last five years. If you start with revenue, um, again, revenue is almost 100% advertising revenue. It's gone from $7.9 billion in 2013 to over 40 billion in 2017. So incredible, incredible revenue growth here over the last five years. It's approximately a 50% compound annual growth rate for, uh, for the top line. Earnings per share, uh, if we go down here, earnings per share has also climbed on a diluted basis from about 60 cents a share up to 539 per share in 2017. I'll just point out note one here Total costs and expenses include 3.7 billion uh, of share-based compensation, and they give you the year, the breakdown by year. Uh, I like the fact that Facebook isn't trying to adjust their earnings to exclude um, share-based compensation. Very clean uh, reporting. If you look at the balance sheet, and we just scroll down a little bit here, again, very clean. Uh, they've got $40 billion of cash, 41.7, uh, no debt. Free cash flow is another metric that they give, I think, on the next page here. And Facebook talks a lot about the need to sort of own their data centers. And so when they talk about purchases of property and equipment, that's really what uh, what's in those line items is the acquisition of the assets required um, for their platform to run, so they've elected to, to, to not use the cloud, um, but to control uh, their data centers. So if you look at free cash flow, again, uh, 2013 was about $3.5 billion, and that has grown to uh, $17.5 billion in 2017. And if you just quickly compare that to their market cap, they've got a market cap of $420 billion, uh, $17.5 billion, over 420 is approximately a 4% free cash flow yield. So again, 
for a high growth tech company, um, 4% is actually not bad. Uh, obviously, we've got some stalwart utility companies that might be at that 10% range, uh, but 4% free cash flow yield for a high growth tech firm uh, definitely isn't bad. The next thing that I want to talk about is ARPU, average revenue per user, and that's something that they show in their investor presentation. So if we go to uh, Q2, there we are. So the Q2 2018 earnings presentation, they actually show how much revenue they generate per user, and I'll admit that, that I, was, uh, I was impressed. Um, given the fact that obviously their platforms are free, so users don't pay them uh, to use the platform, this is fully just the advertising revenue that they're able to generate per user per quarter. So it's a quarterly uh, result. And if you look here at the US and Canada, they are generating over $25 per quarter on average for each Facebook user, which means your Facebook account, assuming you have one, is generating a hundred dollars a year of advertising revenue for Facebook. I thought that was, that was quite impressive. You can also see that the rest of the world is very different. Um, Asia Pacific, um, average of 262. And Europe, somewhere in the middle, you know, close to $10, 876. Another key thing that I want to talk about is governance and voting rights. So, you know, here Facebook um, has a dual class share structure. The class B shares have 10 votes per share, and the class A's, which is what you'd be buying on the open market, uh, have one vote. And Mark Zuckerberg controls 60% of the votes, um, owns the majority of the class B shares. So, again, not having equal voting rights doesn't matter to an investor until it matters to an investor and some of the recent things that you've seen in the news um, around Facebook uh, are you know shareholders being frustrated potentially with the way that the business is being managed and right now there's not much that shareholders can do about it some shareholders are expected to vote to remove Mark Zuckerberg as chairman um, at the next annual meeting but of course, this is really just optics because they, Zuckerberg has 60% of the votes. So um, while they could vote uh, to have him uh, removed as chairman, uh, so long as he decides that he would like to remain as chairman, uh, it's going to be tough for them to enact any change. So I'm always a lot more cautious on, on investments that have dual class uh, share structures. You've got to be careful. Okay. The last thing uh, that we'll talk about uh, is just the recent results. So if you look at the Q2 results, we'll actually go into the conference call transcript here. Uh, wrong one. There we go. On page eight, and Facebook does include conference call transcript on their investor relations websites. So credit to them. Their actual um, investor relations team it's very well set up easy to follow easy to find all of the relevant information and again their reporting is quite clean now the CFO uh, turned some heads on the on the conference call he talked about revenue growth decelerating and he also talked about uh, expenses increasing and really what he said is that over time uh, in terms of the next couple years, maybe three, four years, expect operating margins, which are now running approximately 50%, to de decrease to 35%. Um, that's a huge change. And what's driving this is the, require, the requirement for them to continue to invest, increase the security of the platform, uh, privacy of data, everything that you're seeing in the news, Facebook's chosen to uh, they invest aggressively, uh, and you'll hear the bulls talk about the fact that this will increase their moat and, and competitive uh, advantage over the competition because they're going to be spending billions of dollars and no one else is going to be able to do that. Uh, but from a purely numbers, financials, uh, and uh, 
forecast perspective, this is going to impact their results um, in the short term, in the next couple of years. And that's one of the reasons why I'm sure that the share price has reacted so poorly since the Q2 results. Other thing that I'll point out is, you know, revenue growth has been strong again, about 50% a year over the last five years, but so has head headcount growth. So Facebook ended Q2 with over 30,000 employees, which was up 50% year over year. So yes, the top line has been growing. It looks like it's now about to start that growth is going to decelerate. Um, which doesn't mean it'll decline, but it will decelerate. And the expenses, however, are continued to expect to rise. What else can we talk about here? Well, the executive departures. And I'll just, while we do this, just jump back into the, into the Q2 results. Monthly active users. There's your revenue chart. There we go. Yeah, so executive departures, you've seen in the news over the last month or two that the Instagram founders uh, left, and that's the latest in a string of high-level departures. Um, again, Zuckerberg has full control. He's got 60% of the votes, and it sounds like some of the senior executives, or not everyone, uh, likes working for him. Um, and so take that for what it's worth, whether you think that's, you know, is this a problem? Uh, that can be debated, but you know, on the one hand, when a company sells to Facebook like Instagram did or WhatsApp did, it's not uncommon to see executives leave. I think in the case of Instagram, because they had stuck around for so long, it, that's what really had people you know, uh, wondering if there was more to the story here. Um, so the executive depart departure is number one, and then Another issue that we'd be remiss not to talk about or touch on at least uh, at, at least lightly is the potential regulation. So Facebook has gotten uh, has gotten to be such a big company and such a powerful company in terms of its reach. And you've heard about um, you know the, the potential to influence elections and voting results. And so it's definitely high up on the political radar um, and it's tough to predict these outcomes but important to to recognize that you know there could be some regulation coming to Facebook in the in the coming years and what does that look like um, only time will tell so if we go back now and just sum it up with a few key considerations for the stock here we go. So what are the strengths for Facebook? Well, obviously, it's a global brand with a user base, 2 billion plus. The data set is extremely powerful. Uh, and I think that's borne out in the return on advertising spend. The reason why their revenue has gone up so significantly in recent years is that um, advertisers have just seen how powerful the platform is. I mean, uh, when you're advertising with Facebook, think about how much they already know about you and they're able to place and target those ads and ultimately mean that those are going to be profitable ads for the advertisers. Uh, so they've got an extremely powerful data set. And lastly, advertising metrics. I talked about it just a little bit uh, on the data set comment, but it's considered one of the strongest platforms. Uh, anecdotally, that's the feedback that I hear um, when I talk to folks that are in the space uh, as compared to you know, advertising on Google, etc., which still could be great, but the returns that people are seeing on the Facebook platform are uh, best in breed. Risks, uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, governance structure and voting rights, again, I highlighted that in our discussion. And I think particularly with this one, you know, you want to really make sure and think about that long and hard before you decide to make an investment in Facebook. The company does not pay a dividend. That do not anticipate it to start paying a dividend anytime soon. Um, look at the way that Mark has managed the business uh, historically, and I would expect that management style to continue. Um, and just make sure that you're comfortable being an investor in an entity where you don't have equal uh, voting rights. 
Second, political. Again, too big, too powerful. Uh, all the stuff that you hear in the news. The fake news on the platform, how can they eliminate that? Um, privacy concerns, we've seen that in Europe, um, has resulted in some, uh, some people deleting their accounts. Um, and really beyond the scope of this channel to try and figure out you know, how this manifests itself over time other than to highlight it as a risk um, and to know that you know, Facebook's become large enough and powerful enough that it's definitely on the radar screen of politicians. Third, deceleration of growth. So, you know, would not expect revenue to decrease anytime soon, but um, can it maintain these 50% plus growth rates? It's doing over 40 billion in revenue um, in 2017. It's really hard to continue and grow at that level off of such a high base. And the company in its Q2 release is already guiding to that deceleration in the back half of the year. And number four, lastly, uh, no dividend. So again, if you're buying shares in Facebook, all of your returns are going to be generated based on the price that you sell it for relative to what you bought in at. So um, as a long-term investor, you're not getting paid to wait. You're not getting paid as you go. Uh, all, your, all of your eggs, so to speak, are in the basket of uh, what does the share price do. Key drivers, obviously user growth and ARPU. Uh, if you look at what they're able to generate in North America, if they could come anywhere close to that um, in the rest of the world, that would be a huge, a huge driver for the stock. Or can they continue to, to increase the ARPU here in, uh, in North America? Second, advertising spend. So the market overall, uh, we know that uh, advertising spend is shifting more and more towards digital. Uh, they'll continue to likely benefit from that trend. Um, another th point that I thought about when I was looking at the Facebook story is, is also because e-commerce and the return on advertising spend, when you're looking for conversion um, and you're placing an ad on the Facebook platform, for example, you're going to know almost instantaneously whether those ads are profitable, whether they're converting for you. So unlike you know, the old days where you'd pay to put your company name on a billboard somewhere and hope that enough people see it and maybe they end up buying your product. It was really tough to track conversion. Whereas here, it's instantaneous. So um, where I'm going with this is if you've got good ads and Facebook's able to drive that return on ad spend and it's profitable, well, advertisers are going to continue um, to buy more ads because it's profitable for them to do so. So for every dollar they spend on advertising with Facebook, if they're generating a dollar and a half in profits, uh, well, why wouldn't you just continue to increase that ad spend until, uh, until that ratio stopped holding? That was a bit of a long rant there, but anyway. Uh, and third, required OPEX and CAPEX to ensure data security and support growth. So again, they're talking about it. Um, you know, the, cap the CAPEX is in the billions annually to support their data centers, but of course, given the size and scale of the business, that I don't see as being as big of an issue, but the OPEX side, if you look at how, how much they've grown their headcount, uh, how much they expect to continue to grow the headcount and invest in the business, that's what really blurs the earnings picture out two to three years. And fourth, new products. So. You know, just like you hear people talk about Google having a whole bunch of other side bets and investments that, that may pay off, um, Facebook has some other investments as well. They really haven't monetized um, WhatsApp or their Messenger yet. That's what they're, they're starting to look to do. Uh, virtual reality as well is another place that, that they've, uh, they've tagged as a potential growth area in the future. Right now, it's Facebook and Instagram that are driving revenue and results. So all of the other investments that they're making, you know, assuming that any of those hit could be a catalyst for the stock. So those are the key considerations. If we look at, you know, the bull base and bear case scenarios, again, very illustrative here is just one way of looking at it um, and thinking through our discussion on the stock. Uh, the bull, bull side, um, continued Facebook and Instagram user growth with best-in-class advertising platforms. So let's assume that they continue to be 
you know, the best place for advertisers to go. The return on ad spend is going to be the highest and that the user base for Facebook and Instagram continues to grow, right? We have heard some talk about people deleting their Facebook accounts and um, that's a real concern if you're a Facebook shareholder. But on the bull, the bull case scenario, let's assume that both of those things continue. Let's also assume monetization of messaging and success in new products. So not only are they continuing to grow the Facebook and Instagram side, uh, but revenue and earnings are going to benefit from some of these other products and business lines that they have. And we'll also assume limited government interference or regulation. So by and large, whatever changes are made in the regulatory environment will have a limited impact on the stock. And uh, on the bull side, I sort of talked about $120 billion in revenue in 2021 is, is sort of what I earmarked. So still continued very strong growth. 40% margins, um, so that'll drive about $13 a share in 2021, and at 25 times earnings, if we discount that back two years at 15%, that gets you an implied share price of $245. Base case, continued growth, but investment in security reduces earnings growth in the short to medium term. That's really what they're telling the market right now. Um, moderate new product success so maybe they do start to get some revenues but you know they're already a 40 billion dollar revenue company um, and it takes a lot to, to move the needle on that at this point um, that would project out again what were my assumptions here 100 billion in revenue in 2021 35 percent margins as opposed to 40 percent margins um, about ten dollars in earnings per share in 2021 and if we assume about a 22 times PE multiple we discount it back to two years at 15 percent discount rate that implies a share price of about 158 dollars so 145 today uh, 158 dollar uh, implied share price in our base case so a little bit of upside there and lastly the bear side uh, growth stagnates, increased security spend, uh, reduces margins, and we get some heavy or heavier government regulation. It limits their ability to leverage the customer data. And that, I think, is really their, their biggest competitive advantage here is the data set that they have and their ability to leverage that. Um, and so, you know, if the government were really to step in and prevent them from doing that, that, that would prove very difficult for the business model. Uh, again, on the bear side, 80 billion in revenue was my assumption. 35% margins, uh, about seven dollars and fifty cents of earnings in 2021, and at an 18 times PE multiple. If we discount that back two years at 15%, it gets you to an implied share price of 102 dollars, which is obviously a meaningful decrease from the 145 that it trades at today we've discounted the share price here so if you actually think about your downside if you were to hold the stock for a few years really the hundred and thirty five dollar is the undiscounted number um, so apples to apples uh, the implied share price discounted is 102 but if you think about an actual an actual fact uh, what your downside would be a couple years out if this scenario played out um, the share price would be about 135 dollars so that's a wrap on our Facebook video. Let me know what you think. Uh, have you deleted your Facebook account as well as the stock ticker? Uh, which scenario is most likely? Maybe did I miss a part of the story? Uh, we'll be back soon with more content, but until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.